Hello, and welcome to part 2 of the College Fund. Uh, this episode will be our first foray into politics, so if you're done with politics, I don't mind you bailing uh, from the video. However, before we get knee-deep in the cesspool of political discourse, uh, some, some lighter fare, so we uh, don't all start off just so sad. Uh, should probably break out the confetti effects again, because we actually spent a whole class period in my calculus class doing calculus. And, uh, I mean, we barely got through, like, half a section, so I guess we gotta take it really slow and, uh, not really get anything done in a class that I'm paying to be in. So, that's always fun, but let's just get out of that, because it's math, it's not the most thrilling subject, uh, unless if you have whiz-bang high-end graphics going all over the place. But history, though, we're focusing on the plague, so, uh, you know, br bring out, bring out your Monty Python references. Let's just go. Let's get them out of the way. Yay. It's, uh, you know, it kind of bothers me uh, when people just swap Monty Python quotes, you know, in, in lieu of an actual conversation. It's, is it like, bothers me? I'm not sure if I'm the only one that this is a problem about, but, uh, I don't know. It, it just bothers me. Getting back on the main point, we uh, got to watch a nice video in the class, so that's always fun. And it's from a, it's a History Channel special, you know? Like, back when the History Channel used to have history on it. A great resource for nerds, and, uh, and having some re really neat shows like Modern Marvels. But th then, then the Pawn Stars happened, had a spin-off of that, and then the spin-off got a spin-off, and then spin-off got a spin-off, and then there's the alien showed up, and then there was a guy whose hair looked like he was on every single illegal substance, and you know, and then, but once that happened, there was no, how will the children of the world have a 24-7 resource for World War II stock footage? It's, it's a real shame, it's a real shame, but uh, now it's time for the politics, so what I do, I need to get into a special outfit I keep on hand just for such an occasion. Don't say outfit. What? Oh, come on. Okay. A uniform, then? Um, I need to, like, Spe get okay. special gear or something like that, but, um, All right. uh, special safety gear. Mm -hmm. Now, before I jump into politics, I just need to get into my special safety gear that I keep on hand just for such an occasion. I'm just gonna, st I'm gonna start spinning the chair. Okay, that's not gonna work. That's all. not gonna work. Nope. That's not gonna work. Um... Abandon, abandon parody. <laughs> just cut. Just cut. Just cut. This week was the primary election in Florida for senator and other state positions as well as the general election for local office. Turnout was uh, astonishingly low to people who don't understand what the election cycle has done to uh, everyone else. And I was only able to go because I didn't have class that day, and, and the fact that I was able to uh, get a ride there, because, you know, my car is uh, being a bit of a goof. To help with that, there was this great project launched recently called How to Vote in Every State. I'll uh, link to it in the description. Um, and a great way to get around the insanity of trying to get to the polls on time, whether it's early voting or regular day, is vote by mail. Uh, because you get the ballot way before everyone else does, so you have plenty of time to research, do your due diligence. But, uh, and, uh, you can send it in at your leisure. For a bit of an election update, the local race here fell a bit as expected with most of the incumbents returning to their positions with a few changes. And, uh, and as addition, uh, as a Republican, most of the challengers on the ticket were mostly various degrees of uh, extremes, while your moderate candidates got left behind in the dust. You know, this might just be my perception as a, as a youngin in a district filled with uh, cr crusty old white people. Now, warning, this is going to be the opinion part. So, you know, if opinions bother you, uh, especially if they're different than yours and they make you want to leave uh, all caps, uh, grammarless comments below, just, just go away. 
Uh, since I've had some time due to the uh, a hurricane kind of blew through here recently, if you, if you didn't know. So I've had some time to uh, research the major candidates and their party's platforms. So let's start with them. Okay, first up will be uh, Jill Stein of the Green Party. Now the problem with the Green Party and any other single issue parties is that they have a devoted minority that already agrees with the positions of the party. It's very difficult to bring people into that. In addition, uh, their platform reads very like utopian ambitions and that require, at least in my opinion, an alarming amount of social controls. There's also some worrisome parts, like there's some 9-11 trutherism stuff in there. So that, that kind of bothers me. So does the, does the official part position of the Green Party 9-11 is jet fuel can't melt steel memes? Is that what they're going for? And then, then they also uh, want to project U.S. law around to other nations via the United Nations. And they also want to get rid of manned spaceflight programs, which is absolutely unacceptable to a science person of science. Um, and they also want to uh, like let loose Puerto Rico, which is that's, that's more of a pet issue of me. Uh, I just I think Puerto Rico should become a state. There are some good ideas in it, obviously, you know, uh, but I don't think as a whole the Green Party and is good for the United States, at least in the presidency. Now, moving on to Gary Johnson and the Libertarian Party. Now, first off, they have a terrible website. It is the five-year-old design. You know the one. You've got the generic white bars on the side of just a wall of text in the middle. Yeah, I know all of you who've done web design are just, just your, your face is turning into a raisin. And the main problem with libertarian politics, not just Gary Johnson, but in general, is that they assume and rely on people being good and even when they come together to form large organizations. However, it, people are not necessarily good and, uh, and it takes effort to achieve goodness. Um, and what that goodness is is defined. Um, I'm going to completely uh, skip over that argument because that involves a lot of that involves, uh, you know, starts bringing in philosophy and theology into it, and um, and the discuss and a discussion about that religion, the nature of morality, is best left to those types of people, or comment sections. You know, they're they're where they're well equipped to handle deep, uh, meaningful conversations about the human nature. Good job. <laughs> Great place for YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as we saw with the recent housing crash and the subsequent recession. Uh, the viewpoint of people and the organizations they form being inherently good is naive at best and dangerous at worst. It's, it's, it has, it's great, like, ideology. It's a great belief to have, um, but that pie in the sky is, just doesn't work. It's not realistic. Uh, Constitution Party. Oh my god, these guys are hardline crazies. They're like, do they take every word of these founding, of the founding documents, literally, which prevents any and all debate from occurring in the marketplace of ideas. They want to roll back the clock to right to just the Constitution, right after it was written, ink, ink barely dry. And I read their platform. They have no redeeming qualities. Absolutely none. Honestly, looking through their stuff, it comes across more like a parody of conservative politics. And uh, in case you're wondering, yes, this is the voter block that the Republicans started pandering to in 2010, and uh, and their radical views have had damaging results, to put it mildly. Oh, sweet Christmas, the Republican Party platform, the Don himself. I, I feel you sorry. Need a moment. You need a moment to collect your thoughts. I feel sorry for real journalists who have to do this for a living and dig through this and deliver um, serious and objective commentary, uh, because digging through the jargon to find real political points was near impossible. There is so much just extraneous fluff. I was wondering, like, was this intentional? Was, was, was their intent to like bury their ideas under all of this nonsense so that no one can actually understand what they're trying to do? Which, I mean, that would, that would work, because I still don't understand anything that comes out of Donald Trump's mouth. And it comes across less like a, a party platform and more like the talking points we're going to be hearing until 
uh, November. Also, eerily sounds similar to like the Constitution Party stuff, just, you know, a nice coat of paint on it with uh, some more uh, acceptable language. The weird thing is that it contains like full-blown, like page-long attack ads within the party platform, which is, which is, which is a weird place to put it, at the, at the minimum, anyway. I am fed up with this world! Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Uh, Clinton and the Democrats. Is it possible in politics to win by default? Because uh, that, that's the vibe I'm getting from this election cycle. You know, there's still a bunch of political jargon in there, which is, of course, but you know, at least it isn't like 67 pages long. Uh, but they do uh, articulate their points and you know, phrase their argument in terms of legislation and action and what they're going to try to do. So, uh, by the way, Bernie fans out there, because I know this is the internet, I know there's a lot of Bernie fans out there. Um, some of his talking points and ideas have definitely made it into the Democratic platform. So, y your guys' uh, opinions have made it in. Though, time will tell if this uh, incorporation of more radical politics will destroy the Democratic Party like it has the Republican. Some of the stuff that I do like in there is that they focus, there's a focus on civil rights, which is uh, extremely important considering what's happened in these last couple of years. Antitrust le legislation, you know, dealing with these mega corporations that are able to bypass the law, and overturning Citizens United and getting like, big money out of politics. So, uh, some stuff I don't like, I really am against uh, involving the U.S. in all the nitty-gritties of what's going on in foreign countries, you know, and meddling where we don't belong. Because uh, whenever we do that, we always have a 100 one hundo, one hundred percent success rate. Um, and of course, random vagueness, because you know, you can't, you can't get a straight answer out of a politician, because otherwise, it wouldn't be a politician. At least it's not, you know, confrontational and aggressive. Since these sensitive topics have recently been, according to YouTube, unadvertiser friendly, so there may be some soft censorship going on here. Uh, I leave you with this. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And, as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends our long. Else the puck a liar call. So, Good night unto you all. Give me your hands, if we be friends, and Robin shall return amends. William Shakespeare, Midsummer's Night Dream, Act 5, Scene 1. Every day, a YouTuber goes without a like, comment, subscribe. With just a few moments of your time, you can change that. And they get really close, so that way it's like all black. Can you get any closer? I just messes everything up, but, um... Just fix it, and then I'll come back in. Alright, I'll hold it. Okay. You can come farther. Good. Okay. Is it rolling? Yep. Okay. Uh... No. It's not auto-focusing. We'll just wait till it focuses, that's fine. Oh, see, I was, it didn't focus, so it kind of messes up what you're trying to do. I'll do it again, just see if it just fixes it itself this time. Yeah. <sighs> Alright. This week was the primary election in Florida for a senator and other state local positions, um, as well as the general election for local offices. The turnout. It's still fuzzy. It's even worse. Okay, then I'll just start it here then. Because you can always just do that and then like transition it over, I guess. Let me just. I'll, I'll just do a hard. Thinking maybe if I zoom in, zoom out, it fixes itself. Well, just just abandon that. Idea. I already did. I started a new one. Okay, so it's rolling now. Not, yeah, but you're not in focus at all. Just let it focus then. It's not. I'm sorry.
Sorry. Is it focusing? No. 